there's a saying that goes, timing is everything. Imagine that you're a realtor and you get some inside information about a house that's going up for sale that the bank will foreclose on. And they tell you you have 30 days to get, you know, to get raise the money to get to buy this apartment, to buy this house. But after 30 days, the bank's gonna take it over. You're gonna work for 30 days to make sure that you get it. It's a deal. You have this at the time. If you don't do it at the right time, you're gonna lose it. It's interesting in the parsha, this week's parsha, parsha by Yishlach, Yaakov is returning from Lovin's house to being there for 20 years. And he takes his Torah report, he takes his wives and his 11 children. Binyamin wasn't born yet. Jim wasn't born yet. But there's one child that's not mentioned, and that is Dina. The girl, Dina. Dina's not there. So Rashi immediately points out where's Dina? Where is she? Why doesn't Torah mention her? So Chazal, the rabbis, tell us something very fascinating, which needs an explanation. They say that, that Yaakov Avinu was afraid that he was, knew that Esav was coming towards him, 400 men. He was afraid that Esav would want to marry Dina, mm -hmm. and therefore he hid her. He made sure that she would not be visible. Okay, we understand that. But Chazal proceeded to tell us that that was the wrong thing to do. He was held accountable for that, Yaakov. Because maybe she would make him do tshuva. And therefore, he was punished that she fell in the hands of Shechem. And, um, and therefore, there was the, the, what, he, what Yaakov did was incorrect, according to Chazal. Very difficult to understand at first glance. <laughs> Your daughter, your daughter should marry should marry Esav because maybe she will help him do tshuva. We know that Leah was crying that, that she shouldn't marry, end up in, in marrying Esav. How could we hold Yaakov Avinu responsible for trying to ensure that Dina wouldn't marry Esav? Very difficult to say. You would want your daughter to marry a Russian. But, but why is this held as, 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 a, as a claim against Yaakov? So one of the explanations the commentator says is as follows. At this juncture, when Esau was coming to meet Yaakov, according to one opinion in, in the, amongst the rabbis, Esau kissed Yaakov with his whole heart. He meant it fully. He was ready to really accept and embrace Yaakov. And therefore, had Esau had at that point, had Dina married Esau, there was a real legitimate opportunity for her, for her to enable Esau to do tshuva. It was, it was the right time. It was a time that Esau was more open. And therefore, had, D, had Dina been able to marry Esau at that time, she could be, there's a really, really good chance he would have done tshuva. And therefore, Yaakov was held accountable. That's, a, that's something we mentioned before, timing is everything. At this time, it seemed that Esau could have really done tshuva, and an opportunity was missed. And, that he was, and, and because he, he didn't see that, Yaakov didn't seize that opportunity, he was, held, he was held accountable. Each of us in our own lives have certain opportunities that present themselves. Mm. It could be to help somebody else. You have an ability to help someone else, be it whether it's uh, physically, financially, and sometimes we'll push it off and say, well, maybe I'm not in the mood of doing it right now. I'll do it at a different time. I'll do it later. So we have to know that not always do those opportunities come back. The, you know, the evil inclination, the Yitzhar comes and tricks us a little bit and says, oh, I'm, not, I'm not in the mood of doing it now. I don't, want to, I don't want to exert the effort now. I don't want to put in the resources now. I'll do it at a different time you have to know that that's not necessarily the case, that there'll be another time. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily, because if Hashem gave you the opportunity now, that He wants you to seize that opportunity now. 
and realize it's an opportunity. And if not, you may lose it. So that's timing is everything. Timing is very important. And we have to realize that when we're presented, and everyone, again, there are many, many, my opportunities. Let's say, you know, I, the example I gave before was, was a chesed helping others. But and it could be in a, in a spiritual sense. You know, you have the opportunity to, with those that, that are, were maybe content about this program, about CTC, right? There are others who maybe had the opportunity to come. I'm too tired, it's too late. Ah, da, da, da. We could come up with many, many excuses. Mm -hmm. Many, many. But you didn't take advantage of the opportunity. And you lose out. True. Lose out. Sure. Thank you. ETA. 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 <laughs> that. And weather. So that's something we have to, I think it's an important lesson we see from this, well, what, what, what the rabbis are teaching us, to really realize that timing is very important. And that if we're presented with an opportunity to do a good thing, take advantage of it. Don't assume that that opportunity is going to come back. You, take advantage. Use it. Know that it's there. Hashem put it in your lap to use now. And if it's if it's available now, you'll grab it, and then you'll have that merit forever. Have a good.